A guy at my local club has given me this old Taranis to upgrade the firmware on. We can see that it's quite an old model, it's not even the, the Plus. Have a quick look in the back here. The date inside, the 25th of the 12th. Oh, Merry Christmas. 2013. Turning the radio. Welcome to Taranis. Not quite sure what it said there. Throttle warning. Long press the menu. Looks like the date and time needs resetting as well. If we page across to the version, we can see it's running 219 of the date of 2016. So it's well overdue for an update. Is this going to be a straightforward process or is this going to throw us some challenges? I'm going to connect it up to the OpenTX companion and we'll see how we get on. With the USB cable connected, we just move the two trims into the center and switch on. We get it into its bootloader or we can then connect it to our laptop. Encouraging noise. What we see then are the two drives, the F and the H in this case, which are the Tyrannus drives. There's the F drive and just the two bin files in the Tyrannus file. Before we get involved with any of that, in the OpenTX companion now then, let's make a new profile for this radio. In the new profile then, given it a suitable name, the radio type, pull that down. This I think is just going to be the standard X9D, it's not a plus or any of the others. That will do for now. Go up to downloads. So this is now the X9D, let's download the firmware for it. Save that. And also the SD card contents. The SD card contents are going to take a little while. While that's downloading, let's go back and see if we can write that firmware. Forward radio. Check hardware compatibility and write it to the transmitter. Flashing done. So far, so good. Wait now for the SD card contents to complete and then we'll come back and copy those files. Just before we download the SD card contents, let me show you what happens when you power the radio up first time after the firmware has been updated. Throttle warning. SD card warning because we haven't updated the contents, it's showing the wrong version and a battery warning. The real-time clock battery is low. That would explain why we saw the date of the year 2000 uh, there. Gonna have to change that battery. That's something else to do. Now, what I should say is that this is not the very first time I switched it on after the firmware upgrade. I didn't have the camera on. The first time you switch it on, it will in fact update the prom contents the message went by so quick I'm not entirely sure what it said, but it, 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 it will automatically update something. Now then, it's time to get on and change the SD card contents, or rather, modify them. To do that, I'm going to take the card out of the Tyrannus. Although it says you can do it from the OpenTX companion, I have never had any luck doing it that way. Every single time, it just crashes. Now, whether that's my setup with the laptop or some weird driver problem, I don't know. If you have seen similar issues writing to the SD card contents directly from OpenTX Companion, please leave me a comment down below. I'd uh, love to know if it's not just me. Now, we have a non-standard battery in the back here. Let's try and get this out. that. Remove the SD card. So now I'm going to put that into the laptop to copy the content. 
The new SD card contents come in a zip file. I've just unzipped them into a folder cunningly called new SD. I've plugged in using an, an adapter the Tyrannus SD card and these are the original files here. What I'm going to do is just to copy and paste into this directory. I understand that somewhere in here there are some values that relate to the factory calibration of the transmitter. I'm not entirely sure, but for the avoidance of doubt I'm just going to copy the files into here. Highlight them all. Control c to copy. Right, let's click and paste. This again is going to take a little while. When it's all finished, we'll pop the SD card back in and then we can see what happens when we power it up. Now with the SD card updated and reinstalled, let's switch on. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle warning. Still with the throttle warning. And obviously the battery warning. With regards to the throttle, if we look closely, there is in fact, I can feel a little spring tension there, and it's not going completely to zero. In fact, if we page across, we can see channel 2 is the throttle for some reason, and it is only at 94.8%. If I push it all the way down, we go to minus 100. So there's a physical problem with this particular gimbal. Another reason to get in, inside. If we hold that down though, so now we know it's at zero. Switch on again. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle warning. Still with the throttle warning. My suspicions are aroused at this point. Let's check something. Long press the menu. Have a look at the radio setup. Go right down to the bottom. And what is this that we see? Mode 1. Now clearly this is a Mode 2 transmitter and it was purchased as such. But the firmware has defaulted or decided to be in Mode 1, which is not going to work for us. So if we enter there and change that to mode 2. Throttle warning. We still have the throttle warning. Looking at the channel order, rudder, elevator, throttle, aileron, that doesn't match. We know that this is on, on channel 2. That appears to be on channel 3. Now, in my radio, I set this up as AETR, which should make it right aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. We exit from that now, hold the throttle right down, switch off and switch on. Welcome to OpenTX. All we get is the battery warning. So there's a physical problem with this gimbal and we need to get rid of the RTC warning as well. Time to go under the hood. To remove the cover there are these four screws plus two at the top there. Also a good idea to loosen the nuts here which are holding these two switches in. If you don't have the correct tool, and who does, you can press a pair of needle nose pliers into operation. Obviously the battery has been removed. Let's carefully lift that up. reveal the guts of the thing. In the center there we have the real-time clock battery which we need to pay attention to. On the side here we can see the throttle problems. Now that is this screw here for adjustment. Not quite sure which way it goes. I think we need to turn it counterclockwise. It's reducing the tension on this little spring here. Need to go some more. Don't think we're going to get enough adjustment on there. I think it's actually the tension of this spring which is too much. 
Yeah, so I can feel there's quite a lot of tension on that spring still. Let's physically stretch it a bit. Having elongated the spring slightly, let's hook it back on. And now our throttle is going to zero. You can turn this screw back in. Looking at the RTC battery, it's a CR1220. I don't happen to have one of those. I'll need to order one up. We'll have to live with that error message until I can get that replacement. Let's put the radio back together and at least check that our throttle is fixed. Radio reassembled now. Let's switch on and pray. Welcome to OpenTX. And just the battery warning. Looks like things are good. In the menu, I've changed the inputs into the order which I've set the radio up. Aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. If we page across now, channel 1, our ailerons. Channel 2, elevator. 3, the throttle. And finally, channel 4, the rudder. Excellent news. We're home dry, yes? Well, no. There is yet another piece of firmware that we need to update, which people sometimes forget about. I know from the age of this radio that the transmitter portion of it, the firmware, is out of date. Now, there's no way to actually check what the version is. You just write the version that you want. This came about sometime around 2015, when the European Union decided that the protocol that was used was not conforming to the EU regulations. At that time, then, the internal module firmware was changed and split between, essentially, the European Union and the rest of the world. Technically, then, this radio at the moment is illegal to operate in Europe, as it is not using the EU LBT, as it's known, uh, Listen Before Talk protocol, we need to upgrade the internal module. Looking here on FR Sky's website, the internal module, for reasons best known to them, is called the XJT. When you download the firmware, it's only one file. And within that file, there are the two protocols, the FCC and the EU LBT. So this is the one that we need to get onto the radio and flash. What we do is to copy this file into the firmware directory on the SD card and then we can use the transmitter to flash it. Let's go ahead and do that. Having copied the file across, let's see how we get on. Long press on the menu button. Page across, this is the SD card contents. Going down to firmware. There's only one on there. Here we can see it, the LBT firmware. We press the enter, flash internal module. Once again, fingers crossed and praying. Flash successful, okay. Excellent news. That must be the end to it now, surely. Well, no, having upgraded the internal module, we have now rendered all of the receivers obsolete. Hurrah! What we need to do now is to flash the equivalent LBT firmware onto each of the receivers. Now, I have already done that in a, in a previous video. I'm not going to cover that here. And this one I've already gone ahead and flashed. Let's just see as a last thing that we can bind it to the transmitter. Currently our internal RF module is switched off. Change that to XJT D16. This is a D16 compatible receiver. Now the binding procedure should be just to hold down the FS button whilst we power the unit up. 
applying power there to any of the available sockets. Pick bind, one to eight telemetry on. Now LED flashing. Exit that now. Reboot our receiver. And she's bound. Hurrah. Once again, for the avoidance of doubt, if I just plug a spare servo into channel one, the aileron, there we can see it working. We have now then a perfectly working and up-to-date transmitter with all the firmware and everything else in accordance with the regulations. And working a charm. I hope you'll be happy with that, Roy.